a new radiator. The old one uh, was probably hit by a rock a while ago. And then uh, when I go to wash it, it exposed the problem. Somehow it maybe was plugged by a rock or maybe some mud. It didn't leak, but uh, after I washed it, it starts leaking. And I think uh, the radiator is 20 years old now, 20 some years old. It's probably not worth saving. Even if I patch it now, it might uh, rust and leak again a year later or so. So might as well get a new one. This is our new radiator. Just loaded from the factory. JB Radiator Specialties. We'll go back and uh, start installing today. The radiator is brand new, ordered uh, through Source Engineering and manufactured by JB Radiator Specialty. The cost of it is $3,420 something dollars. It's very expensive. But uh, that's the only way to get it. And it's a specially made radiator. You can't buy it uh, anywhere else. That's the only place to buy it. That's the price you have to pay. Okay, we just got this radiator in. Uh, so this is the most difficult part of this installation. This thing weighs about uh, 100 pounds up. And it's, it's very heavy. So we slide it with, uh, with it facing down on this pallet and then slowly move it underneath the coach and slide it to this point. And then we lift it up to this upright position and then for tonight I'll just lean it on this side of the frame um, and yeah this is the one of the most difficult part uh, the next step is to put the CAC in front in the front of this radiator and then somehow use a jack from underneath to lift it up slowly until one of the uh, it lines with this bolt up on top here and th this hole and that hole will align together and, I'll, and then I'll use the bolt to secure it and then same thing on the other side here's my charged air cooler or CAC for short and this thing has been uh, leaking air the cause of it is on this corner here this corner here there's a piece here had broke and the stress instead of exerting on this structural piece and this tank itself it was on these tubes and those tubes are obviously not designed for taking the weight of this thing and it start to shear I had the professional welder weld it up this part you can see these uh, shiny parts that are new welds and he also helped me weld up uh, those little cracks now it's under this epoxy and what he didn't do for me is fix the leak well to be honest uh, um, that's not his job and uh, I was mainly hopeful to let him help me fix this structural and he tick welded uh, these little cracks anyways but it's still leaking which is a lot better than before but uh, uh, still a little bit uh, away from what I expected so what I did here is on top of the weld I put on some JB weld epoxy and that had uh, held it up a lot better so how do I test it well I have some auxiliary air right here from like, my coach and this is a 4 inch to 2 inch reducer and this is a 2 inch plug for the uh, sewer system actually this is, and I drilled a hole I put on a buck connector not buck connector but and then attach an air nipple right here on the other hand and this is also a uh, for the sewer system a uh, cap four inch cap here from Home Depot and then I just uh, cut a little bit on the inside I'll show you I have finished the test so I'll disassemble all these this thing screws off 
just like this. And then it can be pulled out. This thing is stuck in there quite well. I, I had to cut a little bit on the inside to fit into this hole here. And then just uh, use this screw to tighten it up. And it will make a very good seal. And then on the other side here, uh, I put air in this, but remember it had to be low pressure. So I only put about 20 psi to this port. And then I use some soapy water spray on this. It will have bubbles. So before I had a fix, this thing had no pressure at all. Whatever pressure air I put in, it just leaks right out. Like there's nothing stopping it. Then I went through the welder, he fixed the, uh, the structural part and uh, tried to take weld these tubes. They are so thin that uh, I know it's very difficult. So it, it's definitely out of his range. Then after I put all these epoxy, uh, it start to hold up. Uh, previously, it doesn't hold any pressure at all. Now, uh, it will hold 20, 30 psi for, I'd say, 5 to 10 seconds. It still leaks, but um, this thing doesn't have to be fully leak proof. So I'll call that good. Either way, I sent this CAC to a radiator shop. And they sentenced this thing to death because it was just leaking so bad on these places and they just can't fix it. They want it uh, for a uh, submerge into the water to test its leaks. And then they charged me $125 only to tell me you, they can't fix it. I'm really not very happy about that. I mean, you can't just uh, charge me this and then tell me you can't fix it. The promise was um, they tested if it's good, it's good. If it's not good, they can fix it for me for another $170. Oh, well, actually, I tried to use aluminum brazing on these tubes after they told me they can't fix it. I'm trying to use a torch to heat it up and then melt this uh, brazing bar to connect. Uh, the broken part. That's the first step. The second step is to then uh, fix the leaks in between the tubes. That aluminum brazing is just so difficult. So the margin between melting it and uh, reaching enough pre uh, enough temperature is very small. It, I'm either not reaching of the temperature being too cold and the brazing just doesn't stick to these or I melted this part so it, it's very difficult to control I actually melted this too then I went to the welder and the welder helped me patch this and he fixed the most part of it well it's time to install okay so this is the CAC and this is the radiator I have done an important part of stacking the CAC on top of the radiator. Next step is we uh, flip it straight and then lift it up until the bolts touch. And we have here is the most difficult part of this entire install. We're trying to hook this up onto uh, the frame there. So we just did it for one side using car jacks on here and then some blocks underneath and another jack on there so we lift it up on one side and then bolt it to the frame and now it's the next uh, next side uh, this thing is so heavy it's uh, very difficult even for two people and now we're going to the other side now it's uh, loosely on for now and uh, once the other side is on I'll tighten this Just hook down the other side as well. Now I just need to tighten this up until well, it, it secures. Thank <laughs> you.
we had the radiator and CIC secured on there, tighten. That giant bolt is is very tough to tighten, thanks to the impact gun I had, and uh, we managed to smash it on. And next thing is to put this oil cooler onto the assembly. Still, that need, need uh, two person. Right here, we had uh, the assembly down. This is the radiator right here. And this is the CIC here. And there's the oil cooler underneath the CIC. And I need to secure the button. It's not yet screwed on. And then next thing to do is put this big fan on behind the radiator. There is a giant uh, hydraulic fan there. Uh, we'll put it on, slide it underneath the coach, and then uh, lift it up to be on the radiator. And we should be up and going very soon. We just hooked on this fan here. Uh, it's very difficult to maneuver uh, in this tight area. But anyway. So first thing is to lift it up and then we have to hook on this, uh, this little foot here and then we need to align the screw holes on top over there but it doesn't go in that easily. I have the fan hooked up now, the bottom screws uh, screwed in and the top one I just can't get to some of them. It, it's um, it's so tight here, I just uh, can't push the fan onto the radiator while uh, trying to screw the, the bolts in. It, it's just so tight and then it doesn't fit in very well. I think the tolerance may not be very well. But anyway, I have two of the, uh, actually three of the screws on top. Uh, screwed in and then all the bottom ones are in it should hold very well and these are the wax valve that's controlling the fan on and off I have them hooked up okay, I, here I have the hydraulic cooler hooked up I need to uh, have to hook one more hose to the other side and then here is my transmission cooler Let's see. I have two of them on here, and I still need to hook up the lines. These are the uh, thermostats, and this is the T that goes to the second one. I'll show you when it's all done. But anyway, this is the current status.